Can you hear that? She's stopped. My daughter was singing. My daughter sings a lot, by the way. There are few things in life, though, that will stress you out more than getting a self-assessment tax compliance check. And today, I'm gonna to tell you what to expect from one. So you know what it's like, you've managed to get your self-assessment tax return all done and dusted, you think everything's hunky-dory and you can get on with running your business, and then a letter come through the post that looks a little bit different to your normal kind of letters that you get from HMRC. It's even on slightly different paper. It's not like your nice like white paper that you get on your tax return request, but it's like this kind of slightly off-white, scary colour. And it says on it, check of self-assessment tax return for the year ended. And in my case, it was 5th of April, 2013. And it means you're being audited by HMRC. And it's time to put all of your careful record keeping to the test. So the good news is, in my 25-ish years of being self-employed, I've only ever had one self-assessment tax compliance check. So it doesn't happen very often, but it's kind of more of a when it happens rather than if it happens. It's just always something that you've got to be prepared for. HMRC do random spot checks. And also what can sometimes happen is that something has changed in your tax situation, it's raised a red flag in HMRC and they've decided to carry out a spot check. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through exactly what HMRC asked from me. And at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. The whole point of keeping copies of all your invoices and receipts and all that sort of thing is in case you get a compliance check. So in my situation, at the time, I had an accountant, but hmm, there's a story for another day. Put it this way, the first thing that it says on the letter is, thank you for your return for the year shown above, which we received on the 7th of October, 2013. Our records show that you have appointed an accountant to act on your behalf. I will deal direct with them for the check. The accountant that I had at the time, they received a letter from HMRC as well and their sum total of involvement in the compliance check was to take the letter that they received from HMRC and forward it to me. That's a whole story for another day. Get a good accountant, I do have a good accountant now, but I vowed from that point onwards to always make sure that I had a full understanding of how to do my own accounts because ultimately everything HMRC asked for, only I could really answer those questions. I have seen accountancy services where they say that they will handle HMRC compliance checks entirely on your behalf. Best of luck to you if you're paying for that service, but the book stops with you, not with your accountant. So first of all, just to explain some of the timescales that were involved here before I go into the questions that HMRC asked me. So this was for the tax year ending on the 5th of April, 2013. So in other words, 2012-2013. I submitted my tax return for that tax year on the 7th of October 2013 and then they sent me the compliance check letter. So in other words the first time that I heard from HMRC that I was under investigation was on the 1st of August 2014. So what's that? October, what, May, June, July. 11 months after I submitted my tax return. On the letter they sent me, they asked for a response to the initial questions by the 8th of September, 2014. Now, on their letter that they sent me, there's a lot of very, very personal information that I can't share with the entire planet. So what I have done, I've simply taken a copy of it, and hence it being on the kind of white paper instead of the like slightly scary gray paper from HMRC and I've redacted all of the really confidential stuff in it. But I'm gonna take you through as much as I can possibly show you on this. It's just a certain stuff that I don't wanna get in trouble of HMRC because I don't know how much of this I can share with you. But I see no harm in telling you the generic kind of questions that I was asked. Just 
check of self-assessment tax return for the year ended 5th of April 2013. And as I was saying, I sent that tax return in in October 2013 and then I received this letter from HMRC almost 11 months later. And it just says, every year we check a number of returns to make sure that they are correct and that our customers are paying the right amount of tax. I am now checking this return under section 9a of the Taxes Management Act of 1970. And then it goes on to say, our records show that you have appointed and my accountant name to act on your behalf. And basically what they did is they sent a, an exact copy of this letter to my accountant, but that turned out to be a precious waste of time. I 100% dealt with HMRC on the whole tax investigation. The accountant that I had at the time had no involvement with it whatsoever. It goes on to say, to help me with my check, I need some information and have asked your advisors for it. However, I would like to speak to them before they send it to me, as I think it might speed up the check. I will therefore phone them, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes on to say that I need to send them the information they're asking for by the 8th of September. So they've given me over a month to, to get back to them, which is pretty good. And then it goes on to say what I will be checking and why. I will be looking at the following areas. The level of income declared as a sole trader. The expenses claimed against your income. The capital allowances. Uh, this was kind of before the cash basis came in, by the way. So for this tax return, it was split out into general expenses and annual investment allowance. You probably wouldn't have that now. So I've got capital allowances on here. For most micro businesses, you're probably not going to be listing capital allowances separately. You might do. It goes on to say the lack of bank interest. And that is a very interesting one. And I think that is what triggered the compliance check because I told my accountant about bank interest that I'd received but he didn't bother to put it on the tax return and HMRC I think picked up on the fact that I'd suddenly put bank interest on the tax return that I did the year after but there wasn't any bank interest on from this tax year and what HMRC liked to know in that situation is where did the money come from that you're receiving bank interest on and it turns out it was a small amount of savings that I already had that my accountant knew all about. It's just he didn't bother putting it on the tax return. And I think that's what triggered the compliance check. It could have just been a random spot check though, so there's no guarantee of that. It then goes on to say the figures you have entered on your self-assessment tax return show that you are due a refund of whatever. And by the way, we're not talking thousands here. We're in the kind of hundreds mark. So we're not talking a lot of money here. And they've said they're not going to do the refund until this investigation is complete. They go on to say that they may charge a penalty if there are inaccuracies in my tax return. I'll tell you all about that in part two. And then on page three of the letter that I received from them, we've got this schedule of information and documents needed to carry out our check. And this is just putting a little bit more meat on the bones of what they asked for on page two. But we're not out of the woods yet. This is only just a start. So bearing in mind, at this time, I was teaching the drums part time. So basically, most of the income that we're talking about in here are relating to playing the drums professionally and teaching the drums and, and that sort of thing. And some of the losses that I'd made had been offset against tax paid in the day job known as sideways lost relief. So they went on to say, the income declared is very low and has been since commencement. Let me have a full description of your business and the reason for the low turnover. They then go on to say, loss relief has been claimed, but for losses to be allowable, the business must be run on a commercial basis with a view to realization of profits. Let me have your reasons why you consider the losses are allowable. They then ask for a full analysis of the expenses of whatever it was, together with the receipts to vouch for the amount claimed, and have asked for copies of invoices, or in receipts in other words, to vouch for the annual investment allowance of whatever that was. They've then said, and as I say, I think this is the red flag here, the reason why no bank interest has been declared, although bank interest of whatever, 
was declared in the previous year and the following year. I don't know why I redacted that. What is the source of the funds that generated the interest in 2014? Whilst I appreciate that 2014 is not under investigation at present, I would appreciate your reply. So if they wanted, they could launch a separate investigation for the following tax year as well. But it's all coming down to this question here of why was bank interest declared the year before and the year after, but not during this tax year? And it was because I told my accountant about it and they hadn't bothered putting it on the tax return. It then goes on to say, which is good news really, that they were happy to receive all the information that they've asked for electronically, which was great. And from this point onwards, I dealt with HMRC by email. I sent them copies of everything as scanned PDFs and they were happy with that. So I sent my response back to HMRC and I'll tell you what my response was in part two. And then HMRC got back to me with a lot more questions. So here's a second letter that I received from HMRC and now this is where they start digging into things in a lot more detail. So you can see they've got back to me on the 24th of September now. Now bear in mind, they got in touch with me on the 1st of August. So almost two months have gone past now and that's two months of restless nights, put it that way. So I got back to them pretty promptly. 21st of August, it took me to, there was a little bit of toing and froing and calling HMRC and just clarifying some of the information that they asked for. And I sent everything back to them on the 21st of August. So it took just over a month for them to get back to me after I provided all the information that they asked for. Now they're digging into things. So the vast, please let me know which parts of your business the income of whatever came from. So in other words, they're digging into specific income that I'd received and they want to know what that relates to. How many drum lessons did I give? How many times did I play professionally in a band as a dep drummer? How much income has been generated from the online business? This was back at the very, very early days of YouTube and there was a tiny bit of YouTube income back then, I think. And they were asking about that side of things. They've gone on to say, during our telephone conversation, you advised that the first couple of years were spent setting the business up. However, this is the third year that the turnover has been very low. As requested in my original letter, please let me have your reasons why you consider the business was run on a commercial basis with a view to realizing profits. Which part of the business generated income in the earlier years? Did the business actually start on and the date that I said the business started on, or was I just setting it up? How much time did I devote to the business each week? Then, mileage. Let me have a copy of the mileage log, including the business reason for each trip. In addition, let me have the reason why you claimed however much for business miles when the turnover is so low. General expenses. You claimed for travel and accommodation for a visit to wherever in September 2012. Let me have full details of the business purpose of this trip. If you are teaching... Now, at that time, I was receiving advanced drum tuition, even though I was a teacher myself. And obviously, that is a business expense because training of any description for your own business development is a business expense that you can potentially offset against your income. So they've said, if you're teaching drumming, why did you need lessons? And that was fine. I just explained it was kind of top up, more advanced lessons to basically keep my own skills up to date. What was the business purpose of this expense? Fine. I explained that to them. You have claimed, however much for band rehearsals. So this was because I was playing professionally in a band and doing depth drumming and that sort of thing. We had to have band rehearsals for that to all work and therefore I claimed, uh, and it was only a tiny amount, but I did have claims on there for, um, for band rehearsals. I didn't even have copies of receipts for that, but they've basically said you've claimed for band rehearsals. Why would you spend this amount on rehearsals with little or no income? Yeah, very valid point. Um, you know, for a long time I really tried quite hard to make money out of just playing the drums and it didn't really work out. But yeah, there you go, hindsight. 
please let me have full details of the rehearsals, dates, bands, the names of the bands. Was this a share of the total expenses? So they're going into stuff in quite a lot of detail. Uh, they've gone on to say the cost of the domain name would not be allowable as a, a capital expense. Fair enough. I accidentally put a domain name down in the capital expenditure rather than it should have just been a general operational expense. That never transpired to be a problem. Use of home. The amount claimed is very high, especially in relation to the level of income declared. Let me have a full breakdown of the amount claimed split between the properties. In addition, for both properties... Uh, I'm not sure why they're saying split between the properties. I think it was because I moved house halfway through the tax year. It might have been to do with that. I, at no point did I own two properties at the same time. Uh, let me have the following information. Area. What proportion in terms of the area of the home is used for trade purposes? Usage. How much is consumed? This is appropriate where there is metered or measurable supply, such as electricity, gas or water. Time, how long is it used for, for trade purposes, as compared to any other use? I'll go over all my responses to that in part two. Then capital expenditure. Let me have copies of invoices for all purchases greater than £250. And then they've gone on to say, let me have your reply by the 27th of October. When was this? This was dated 24th of September. So they're giving me about a month to pull all this information together, which is fine as long as you've got your, your act together. If you send in physical documents, they're basically saying that if you want them back, you're going to have to tell them. Otherwise, they will destroy them after 90 days. As it is, I did everything electronically by email. And that was that. I sent all the information they asked for back to them. My general tip with all of this is if you've got nothing to hide, don't panic. If you've kept good accounting records from day one, you should have nothing to worry about. Get back to HMRC as quickly as you can. Get the whole awful, awful process over and done with as soon as you can because it's stressful and I know for the whole time that this was going on, I didn't sleep at night and it, you always have that seed of doubt planted in your mind what have I done wrong HMRC aren't out there to destroy your business but they do want to make sure that you're not being naughty on your tax returns and generally speaking the worst that'll normally happen is that you'll end up having to pay back tax that you should have paid in the first place I know HMRC do have the power to issue fines and to carry out all sorts of more in-depth checks if they wanted to. But those sort of checks are few and far between, so don't panic. Do hit subscribe and come back for part two, and I'll explain all of my answers that I gave to HMRC. I'll tell you how long the whole process took, and I'll tell you whether or not I got into trouble. Do let us know in the comments if you've ever had a compliance check and how it went for you. For now, take care, folks, and I shall see you next time. Bye.